Hello learners, how are you? I hope you all are doing well. Today we are going to study part 3 of our chapter marketing class 12th business studies. In the previous sessions we had discussed about basic concepts of marketing, then we have discussed about functions of marketing and we started our very important topic of the chapter marketing mix. And in that we discussed about various elements of marketing mix. So, in today's session we will be discussing all those elements in detailed manner. So, let us start with product mix. Product mix, the important elements of product mix includes branding, labeling and packaging. Let us discuss it in detail. Branding. Branding is the process used to create a distinct identity of a product. It is the process of using a name, term, symbol or design individually or in some combinations to identify a product. Brand, name, term, sign, design or some combination of above used to identify the product of a seller and to differentiate them from those of competitors. It includes two components, brand name and brand mark. Brand name, that part of brand which can be spoken is called brand name. It is a verbal component of brand. Brand mark, that part of brand which can be recognized but is not utterable is called brand mark. It appears in the form of a symbol, design, distinct color scheme, etc. Trademark, a brand or a part of brand that is given legal protection is called trademark. The protection is given against its used by other firms. Next important thing is what should be the qualities of a good brand name. A brand name should be short, easy to pronounce, spell and remember. A good brand name should suggest product benefits and quality. It should be distinctive. It should be adaptable to packaging or labeling requirements to different advertising media and to different languages. A brand name should be versatile to accommodate new products. It must be capable of being registered and protected legally. A good brand name should have a staying power. Next comes advantages of branding. We seek advantages of branding in two parts. First advantages to the marketers and second advantages to the customers. Advantages to the marketers. Enable product differentiations. It distinguishes the firm products from that of its competitors. Thus enables the firms to secure and controls its market. Branding helps in advertising and display programs. A brand helps a firm in its advertising and display programs because without a brand the advertiser can only create awareness about the generic product and not be sure of the sale of his brand. Differential pricing, branding enables a firm to charge different price for its product than charged by its competitors. As a when customer like and become used to a brand they would agree to pay a little more for it than the competing product. Next, ease in introduction of a new product. If a new product is introduced under the known brand, it minimizes the selling cost of marketer and he enjoys the reflected glory of the brand. Now we will discuss what are the advantages of branding to the customers. Helps in product identification. Branding helps the customer in identification of product. If customer is satisfied with the brand, he will not make a close inspection every time. Thus, branding greatly facilitates repeat purchase of products, ensures quality. Branding ensures particular level of quality of the product. If there is any deviation in quality, customers can have recourse to the manufacturer marketer, it increases confidence and level of satisfaction of customers. Status symbol, some brands become 
status symbol because of their quality. Customers feel proud of using them and so it increases level of satisfaction of customers. So this is all about our branding which is the first element of product mix. Next element of product mix we have is packaging. It refers to the designing of producing the container or wrapper of a product. A good packaging often helps in selling the product so it is called a silent salesman. Packaging has three levels. First is primary package. Primary package refers to the product's immediate container. For example, a toffee in a wrapper or a matchbox. Second, secondary package. It refers to the additional layers of protection that are kept till the product is ready for use. For example, a Colgate toothpaste usually comes in the cardboard box. When consumer starts using the product, they will dispose of the box but retain the primary tube. Next we have transport package. Transportation packaging refers to the further packaging components necessary for storage, identification and transportation. For example, package of toffees are put into corrugated boxes for storing at a manufacturer's warehouse and for transportation. Next we have functions of packaging. The first and foremost function of packaging is product identification. Packaging helps in identification of the product. Then product protection. The main function of the packaging is to provide protection to the product from the dirt, spoilage, breakage, leakage, insects and climatic effects. Then packaging facilitates use of the product. The size and the shape of package should be convenient in carriage, stocking and consumption. Packaging helps in product promotion as it simplifies the work of sales promotion. Sometime it may work even better than advertising. Next we have importance of packaging. The first and foremost importance of packaging we have is rising standards of health and sanitation. Because of the increasing standard of living in the country, more people have started purchasing packed goods as chances of adulteration in such goods are minimized. Next, self-service outlets. With the increasing popularity of self-service outlets, some of the traditional role assigned to personal selling with respect to promotion has gone to packaging. Packaging offers innovational opportunities. Some of the recent developments in the innovation of packaging used in the market product has changed the marketing scene in the country. For example, Tetra Pak for milk. Then product differentiation. Packaging helps in creating product differentiation, colors, size, material etc. of packaging makes a difference in perception of customers about the quality of product. The last element of product mix we have is labeling. Labeling means putting identification marks on the package. Label is a carrier of information and provides information like name of the product, name of the manufacturer, contents of the product, expiry and manufacturing date, general information for use, weight, etc. Labels perform various functions such as identify the product. It helps the customer to identify the products from the various types available. For example, we can easily identify a Cadbury chocolate from the various chocolates by purple color of its label. Labeling helps in describing the product and specify its contents. The manufacturer prints all the information related to the product. Labeling helps in grading of the product. With the help of label, products can be graded in different categories, for example, sometimes marketers assign different grades to indicate different features or quality of product. Then labeling helps in promotion of products. A carefully designed label is an aid in promotion of the products. Attractive and colorful labels excites the customers and induce them 
to buy the products. For example, 40 percent extra free mentioned on detergent will definitely excite the customer and persuade him to buy the product. Labeling provides information required by law. There is a legal compulsion to print batch number contents maximum retail price that is MRP, weight, volume on the all products and statutory warnings on the packets of cigarettes. Smoking is injurious to health. In case of hazard or poisonous material, appropriate safety warnings need to be put. So, these are the three major elements of product mix which we have discussed that is branding, labeling and packaging. We have discussed various advantages and functions of these elements. Next elements of marketing mix is price mix. Price mix simply means the amount of money paid by the buyer in consideration of the purchase of product and service. This money represents some of values that consumers exchange for the benefit of having or using the product. No product can be launched without a price tag or at least some guidelines for pricing. So, learners, it is generally a regulator of the demand of the product, which is normally expressed in monetary terms. Pricing decisions includes decisions with respect to basic price, discounts to be offered, etc. Next thing comes is factors determining price determination. The so first and foremost factor is pricing objective. What are the firm's objective regarding the price? That whether the firm wants to maximize profits in short term, tend to charge maximum price. If firm wants to obtain large share of the market that is by maximizing sales, it will charge lower price. If firms is operating in competitive market, then it may charge lower price for the product. Next factor is product cost. Price should include all costs and also include a fair return for undertaking the marketing efforts and risk. The cost of product includes cost of producing, distributing and selling the product. Cost sets the floor price that is the minimum level or lower limit at which the product may be sold. Price should recover total cost that is fixed cost, variable cost and semi variable cost in the long run. But in certain circumstances such as introduction of new product, entry into new market, product price may not cover all the cost for the short while. Next factor is utility and demand. We had discussed the meaning of utility and demand in the first session. Utility provided by the product and the demand of a product set the upper limit of price that a buyer would be willing to pay for a product. Buyers pay to the point where the utility and the demand of the product is more than or equal to the utility derived from it. Consumers purchase more at a lesser price and demand is said to be elastic if small change in the price results in the large change in the quantity demanded. If demand is inelastic, firm can fix higher prices. Next factor is competition in the market. Prices of competitors need to be considered before fixing prices. Not only prices, but the quality and the features of the competitive products must be examined carefully before fixing the prices. Then government policies. There are certain products which are regulated by the government. So products regulated by government pricing regulation need to be priced as per the government policies. If government declares a product as essential product, in such case government does not allow firms to charge high price and intervene to regulate the prices of the product. So learners, today we have discussed about two major elements of marketing mix that is product mix and price mix. 
and we have discussed various elements of product mix and various factors affecting price mix of marketing. So, let us have practice questions. Question number 1, packaging is considered as a silent salesman. Do you agree, defend or refute the statement? Question number 2, how does branding helps in product differentiation? Does branding help in the marketing of products? Question number 3, what is meant by price mix? Explain any three factors affecting pricing decisions of the firm. So, I hope you have enjoyed the today's sessions and have learnt many new things about marketing and marketing mix. So, in the next sessions we will be covering the other two elements of marketing mix. Till then, goodbye, thank you.